Jack is going to take about 12 minutes and read a selection from the book. And it's something we've never done before in a podcast, but this is so compelling and so lifted our hearts that we want to share it with you. If your continuing search for answers has led you nowhere, you will find the truth here on the Forbidden Doctor Podcast. Seek the truth with your hosts, Dr. Jack and Mary Stockwell. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Jack. And Mary. And we're here with the Forbidden Doctor podcast episode 103. 103 Forbidden Ways to Save Your Heart. We're going to tell you today and show you the basic advice about heart disease and recommended medical therapies. Notice I didn't say treatment. We have 103 suggestions that have been shown over time to actually do something about helping the heart, helping the heart do its job without drugging it to death. Um, we, <laughs> we had this waitress today that oh, yeah. um, told us, was telling us about a customer of hers that had died of a heart attack all of a sudden. And she said, I don't know what happened. He must have just stopped taking his heart medication yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, we just sat there in stunned silence. Yeah, we Just, we didn't know what to say. I mean, how how do you educate somebody in, you know... In a couple of minutes. <laughs> they've missed their entire life that there's other ways to save and feed and help your heart yep. than, the, than only the medical ways. So before we get started here, a quick commercial break <laughs> brought to you by The Forbidden Doctor. We now have both Forbidden Doctor products available on Amazon. So one of the most exciting things that has happened to us is that we, after a long and exhaustive investigation of us by Amazon, they approved for sale our two products on their site. Because we put in words like supporting diabetes and preventing cancer in our description, we had to go through an extra long application process, but we got yanked off twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they called it yanked, too. They said, we've yanked your listing. But hey, we're the forbidden doctor. These things happen. These things happen. That's what we have to do is get out there and go on the very cutting edge. But we're super excited there on Amazon and we've already had a couple testimonials on there. We've had a lot more than a couple. Well, yeah. I was thinking about Aegis Thyroid. Yes. We've, they, we've just barely gotten that on Amazon. We have a couple on there. But, um, of course, we've been selling this for a couple of years in our clinic. Yeah, and I've had plenty of good testimonials from patients in the clinic while I'm taking care of them. Oh, yeah. We've had many. I've talked about them on the podcast. But we, want, we put these on here because these are Amazon testimonials from verified purchasers. I mean, mm -hmm. this isn't, you know, something we did. Yeah, this, this man said, my overall health is improved. I need less sleep. Weakness in my arms and legs are all gone. I do not need to pack food with me when I leave home. I've lost five pounds because I do not need to eat all the time. I've had problems with my blood sugar most of my life. I can now go out without, I can now go without eating between meals, and I have no problems with my blood sugar now that I'm taking Lee Enzymes. All right. I highly recommend this product. And for the... Um, the other verified thyroid, purchase. Yeah. This is for thyroid, right? No, 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 this no. Is, no, no. This is still the enzymes. This is the enzymes. My sister recently passed away from pancreatic cancer, a horrible death. I'm thrilled that I have this opportunity to do everything I can to support my pancreas health. I have enjoyed listening to the podcast that further educate me on how to take control of my own health and well-being. Knowing the story behind this product and what it can do for me is exciting. I'm just beginning my journey down the road to a longer, healthier life. Yeah. Pretty, That's great. Pretty exciting. So again, um, we are not recommending any of this stuff as medical advice. These podcasts are for education purposes only. They are not intended to be a diversion away from the current system of disease management. It is our intention to offer a rational and very effective approach to aiding your body in its ability to rebuild, rebuild and heal. Please be advised that any suggested nutritional advice or dietary advice is not intended as any primary treatment or therapy for any disease or particular bodily symptom. Nutritional counseling, supplemented vitamin recommendations, nutritional advice, and the adjunctive schedule of nutrition is provided solely to upgrade the quality of foods in the patient's diet in order to supply good nutrition supporting the physiological and biomechanical processes of the human body. That should cover us. All right. 
Time for our weekly feature, Forbidden Secrets They Don't Want You to Know. These are the secret things they keep from you, the dumb things they tell you, and the really important things they know nothing about. This week, I picked an article from AARP. It's called Healthy You. Now, this is my subscription. So be, <laughs> caref- be careful with my magazine. <laughs> no, you're not old enough to get this. No, no, this, is, this <clears throat> comes in your name. Yep. And it's so scary, the advice they give in this magazine. I mean, I just want to scream almost every time. But this was just over the top. This, were, this was an article called Fast Fixes for What Ails You. And I put the link at the bottom so you can go read it if you'd like. But And I'm not going to read you everything, of course. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns of different things that can help, that, that you might need help with. But the one that just I was screaming about was for diabetes. This is from a Harvard, Harvard endocrinologist. He says, to help to have a fast fix, enjoy a piece of chocolate. Mm. A bit of dark chocolate daily may help prevent diabetes. <laughs> According to a study in the British Journal of Nutrition, two squares of 60 to 70% pure cocoa is the ideal amount to have. Says Harvard endocrinologist George King. Yeah. So it's a study that was in the British Journal of Nutrition. I wonder if Nestle paid for that study. Can you believe that? This is their advice to prevent diabetes. I mean, nothing about the pancreas, supporting the pancreas, the kidneys, I mean, nothing. And then there was three pieces of advice. And the first one was enjoy a piece of chocolate yes. to prevent diabetes. The next one was dress your salad in vinegar, which actually is really nice. I mean, that's actually a good one. Um, that'll help your digestion. I like that one. And the third one is decide to go to a yoga class. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just this is the level of our health care in this country. Yeah, the, the yoga is very good, but there's some other things that you might want to do when it comes to taking care of the, of yeah. the heart or of these health fixes. Yeah, and that's the thing we got kicked off Amazon for because yeah. we had the word diabetes with our Lee enzymes. Yeah. You know, um, we have so many testimonials about that also. Um, just my brother-in-law alone who said that, he was di- he was diabetic, but he was not on medication. But he would have these hypoglycemic drops, you know, just yep. really bad. And he says ever since he started the enzymes, he's none of those. He said they've all gone away. But this article had other, you know, low energy. Drink a glass of water. That, <laughs> yeah, okay. that, that was their first suggestion. Take a power nap is their second one, and watch a sitcom. That's their third... For low, for low energy? That's their third recommendation. The problem for, is they've been sitting there watching a sitcom. <laughs> no wonder they have low energy. The best one was excess weight. Chew a stick of gum. Or head to the supermarket. Yeah, it was go for a spin on a bike, which that's, that's good. Are you sure it said that? I would think it would said avoid the supermarket. <laughs> no, it said head to the supermarket oh, all right. for exercise. And then, I, I don't know, heart disease. This was a big one. Because that's what this podcast is on, is heart disease. Their three things for heart disease was pop a probiotic, which that's wow. good. I mean, that's... I can't believe they I said like that. I like that one. And then the next one was walk with vigor. And then the third one was connect with a friend. We have that suggestion further down in this program, yeah. connecting with a friend. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, those, I, are, you know, those aren't terrible things, no. but I, it's, it's pathetic what, what we don't know about feeding and healing and taking care of the heart in this country. So that's why this podcast is here, is here today. We got another great one for you. <laughs> and you talked to a patient today who did not believe this was no, true. I, one of our patients in clinic, I was doing a yeah, biomeridian on. and it, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is one of those fake news things. But this is so astounding. I had to put it on our podcast. If you look at the picture here, if you're listening, take a look at this picture. Thousands of Skittles intended for cattle feed spill on Wisconsin Highway. Yeah, you read that right. Yeah. Fox13now.com was the news source that reported this. They've been feeding this candy to cows for years. Yes. I mean, the <laughs> this story starts out about Skittles, but ends up being about cows. Yeah, well, tell us. Rourke's experience with this, our son. Oh, yeah. Rourke, when he ate, 
you know, he didn't have any sugar for years when we, you know, when he was a little kid. And he got a hold of some Skittles. We went to a football game and somebody was selling Skittles. And I don't know, it was one of the first few times he ate Skittles that night. He projectile vomited. Yes, he did. That was His unbelievable. Body said, Get this out of here. So this story starts out about Skittles, but it ends about cows. A well-known candy was spilled all over the county highway near Blackbird Road. Um, no one knew where the candy came from or where it was going, but county road crews said the Skittles spill was actually helpful as the roads in the area have been kind of icy <laughs> and the thousands of little candies improved traction. Sheriff officials said it has been reported that the Skittles were intended to be feed for cattle as they do not make the cut for packaging at the company. So these were bad Skittles. You know, imagine somebody sitting there. There's a bad one. There's a bad There's one. There's a bad Skittle. There's a bad Skittle as they go by on a conveyor belt. Yeah. Yes, they've been feeding candy to cows, and they've been doing it for years. A former farmer told CNN affiliate that candy makers and bakeries often sell rejects to be used as cattle feed because they provide cheap carbs. Now tell what happened to you when you owned that bakery years ago. Well, yeah, I had uh, I was an, uh, one of the owners of um, uh, Granny Gram, Gram, Granny Sycamore bread, very popular bread, but it's all over the country now. Mm-hmm. I got out of it a little early. Yeah, or I might not be sitting here with this. <laughs> no, but it was white bread, and I just you know guilt I couldn't do that any, yeah. any longer. Karma, karma, karma. That's right. But uh, there were people who would come in and buy the day old. We never had day old bread more than a day old because. The day of the day old, at the end of the day, people would come in and buy that stuff and take it home and feed it to their cows and to their pigs. Wow. Uh, you know, that never dawned on me as being problematic until I just read about this. Yeah. And, th- and, this and that is- stuff had so much sugar in it, it wasn't any different than Skittles. Well, it is, because this has artificial colors in it. <laughs> okay, it says the practice goes back decades, but it picked up steam in 2012 when corn prices were surging and cattle farmers were looking for a cheaper way to keep their cows and other livestock fed. It's a, this, this CNN guy said it's a very good way for producers to reduce feed costs and to provide less expensive food for consumers, said Kia Fanning, a livestock nutritionist with Great Plains Livestock Consulting. <laughs> a, livestock, a livestock nutritionist a said nutritionist. this is a good way to reduce feed costs. Well, I could say the same thing at home. Instead of feeding your children grass-fed beef, organic vegetables, <laughs> and tree-ripened food, fruit, uh, uh, fruit, feed them Skittles. Yeah. Well, listen to this. It's, I, a, it's a less expensive way of meeting their yeah, nutritional requirements. What is this stuff about cooking dinner? I, no. it just Skittles. John Waller, an animal science professor at the University of Texas, told Life Science, I think it's a viable diet. It keeps fat material from going out into the landfill... And it's a good way to get nutrients in these cattle. Nutrients. It's actually from the University of Tennessee. What did I say? Texas. Oh, close enough. <laughs> but it, it is a good way to get nutrients in these cattle. What, what sugar? But what, what makes no sense? It keeps fat material from going out in the <clears throat> landfill. It's not fat. It's sugar. <laughs> I, I don't know. And synthetic you know, dyes and everything else. Yep. Um, said, uh, absolutely gross, w- wrote one common commentator that was writing this article. Why are we okay with feeding cows Skittles to fatten them up? And and also, that's where your, f- your meat comes from. We're feeding this to people. I hope you all learned something from yes. this. But another commander, commentator considered the advantages. He said, strawberry Skittles equals strawberry milk. There you go. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> I well, think, they ought to take the AARP advice with a chocolate for diabetes and feed the chocolate to them so we can have chocolate milk. <laughs> chocolate and, oh, yeah. That's, yeah all right. Yeah. That's enough of that They nonsense. would be better to use those Skittles to improve traction yes, on the road. Yes, that would be a much better use of the Skittles. Okay, we had to throw that in because that was just amazing. Okay, so we are getting into, what, we're 14 minutes in here already. We better get going. Mm -hmm. The medical establishment says there are basically three ways to prevent heart problems. Eat your vegetables, take a statin drug to lower your cholesterol, even though there is no relationship between heart problems and cholesterol. The evidence is overwhelming. My patient today, excuse me, patient of the clinic, 
that I worked with today is her husband is on statins and has been for about 20 years. And, you know, the dementia setting in and aching and yep. so many problems. Systemic pain you'll get from statin drugs. Rhabdomyolysis is what they call it. And to exercise. So those three things. Eat your vegetables. Take a drug if your, you know, blood pressure gets high. And exercise. All right. Well, we have, on the other hand, found 103 forbidden ways to support the heart. Yeah, and I run, coincidentally, this podcast is 103. Yes. So, oh, this is podcast number 103. Yes. And we found 103 forbidden ways to support your heart. So we, we just love the heart. And we're, we're going to show you that before this podcast is over. But well, one of the re- very interesting things about this is the heart sound is the first sound you hear in a developing human. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. You can hear other sounds in a developing human, the baby inside the uterus. But the first sound that baby lets out is the heartbeat. And, and there, there's something spiritual about that. I mean, yeah. there's something magical, wonderful about that, not just physiology. But something magical. I don't know a better word to use. Yeah. Well, we want to teach you a few other things real quickly about the heart. We've had a lot of podcasts on the heart. But um, the, one of the cool things that you were telling a patient this the other day. Yeah, she was surprised. Yeah. Uh, she was getting a heart sound recorder scan, and she was sitting there, and she looked up at me because I was trying, you know, that took a few minutes to interpret it. And I said, you know what's different about your heart? today compared to just yesterday at this time? And she goes, what? I said, it has beat 100,000 times. That's cool. And she was just like, really? I but said, yes. your heart spends two thirds of its life. Not beating. Not beating. It's at, at rest. dead rest. Yes. Now we're going to explain that here for a second. Because that's really kind, of, really kind of cool information. Because if you live to be 100 years old, and your heart is doing its beating the way it's supposed to beat. Every, every cardiac cycle, there's a lub and a dub. And every cardiac cycle, there's a period of rest between the next cycle. If you live to be 100 years old and you never have a problem with your heart, your heart will be absolutely motionless, dead still, for 67 of those 100 years. Otherwise, you won't, you won't live. live to be 100 years old. Here's a little explanation. We've put in a heart scan here from our new heart sound recorder device. And this is an ideal graph, and it's showing the lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And the lub, of course, is bigger than the dub. But we're, we just want to, to show here that the lub is actually what causes the lub. The louder sound is the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valves that's followed by a little rest period called the systolic rest period. That's when uh, certain chambers are fill. Uh, blood has been pumped out. Chambers are filling back up, and then the dub is the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves. That's followed by the diastolic rest period, which should be twice as long as the systolic rest period. Well, so when you see that big signal and the little one, mm-hmm. and then a big signal and a little one, mm-hmm. and then a big signal, a cardiac cycle is from that big signal to the next big signal. Lub dub. But, but look how flat the line is. That's the rest. That's the that's dead the rest, rest period when the heart isn't doing anything. Yeah. Well, what was funny in this wonderful 2017, I went looking for an for a just a little graphic for a, a heart graph. From an EKG. From an EKG, anything. I looked everywhere, all over Google. I thought I could just pull one up really fast and throw it in here. I could not find one. I could not find a normal one. A correctly. A correct one, right. Uh, yes, one that's showing correct. The, the first lub, uh, the S1 as they call it, the first. First sound. First second sound. sound. The, the, uh, that's what the S stands for. Um, they had it misshapen everywhere, and then they had perfect space between the um, lub and the dub, the rest periods. They're yes. supposed to be one third to two thirds. Yes. And they had it perfectly spaced everywhere. Yeah. Even I, spacing between. I searched for hundreds of different graphs, could not find one anywhere. Yep. So I had to go to the website, the Heart Sound Recorder website. And, and get actually, a copy of that picture. And steal this right. off of there. So I just thought that was a little interesting tip. So there. we're going to go through the medical uh, suggestions here for treatment of the heart. 
We're going to give our suggestions for supporting the heart a little bit later. But heart disease treatments vary by condition. As, as it says here, if you have a heart infection, you're probably going to be given antibiotics. In general, treatment for heart disease usually includes lifestyle changes, medications, and if that doesn't work, surgery. medical procedures or surgery. Yeah. This is, at, and you can see the URL there, mayoclinic.org. I took this diseases. right off the Mayo Clinic. Yes. So this is the top of the top. And lifestyle changes, of course, is eating low fat, which will kill you, low sodium diet, and getting at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise, quit smoking, and limit alcohol. That is it. There is no food. There is no support. Yes. There is no... No dietary, nutritional suggestions, nothing like that. Nothing. It's and just, then take your medications, of course. If the, if the lifestyle doesn't work, take your medications. Yeah, and if that and doesn't work... And then if work, the medications, <laughs> medications don't work, get some heart surgery. Get some surgery. That's from the Mayo Clinic. Well, that was not very fortunate for Alan Thick, as we talked about in other podcasts. He had an explosion in his heart. This cardiologist said, in light of Alan Thick's death... While playing the game he loved, a cardiologist said heart attacks in healthy, active people are quite common and highlight the importance of understanding potential warning signs. Yes, and while you and I believe heavily in the importance of understanding potential warning signs, look at what he's saying here. You can be health, uh, heart attacks are a part of being a healthy lifestyle. Just happens. Yeah. Just happened. That's what he just said. Heart attacks in healthy, active people are quite common. You now, conversely, you would expect it to say heart attacks are rare in healthy, <laughs> active people. But no, no, they're they're quite common in healthy, Look active at Alan people. Thick. He so was you super to, active. Well, you have to completely redefine what healthy means. Now, healthy from this point of view is to include heart attacks. Yeah. Oh, he had a heart attack. I thought he was healthy. No, he is healthy. Just he just had a life. heart attack. Yeah. This is insane. You know, uh, oh, I think I talked about it in another podcast. In the movie Passengers, you know, this is like <clears throat> the year 4032 so, or yeah. something. <laughs> and her father died of a heart attack. Yeah, at 30, 32 years old. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they never two, figure it out. 2,000 years in the future, they're still dying of heart attacks. <laughs> they're still dying. But Whereas what, 100 years ago, they were not dying that's of right. heart attacks. That's right. They didn't even know what the... Um, um, it was only during the teens... This is 2017. Mm -hmm. It was only during the teens of 100 years ago that heart attacks started to show up. Yeah, 19. Within 20 years after the appearance of white flour. That you sold. Yeah, I know. I feel guilty about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But what I wanted to emphasize here is the, the, all they're talking about is the importance of understanding potential warning signs, which is okay. There's no problem with that. Well, that's good advice. It's good advice. But that's it. In but, other words, just get to the ER, like we pointed out in yeah, the other podcast. But the warning sign for a lot of people is a heart attack. Yeah, it's the big first yeah. sign. Death. Yep. Yeah. Nothing about healing and preventing heart attacks at all. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Mayo Clinic's description of heart disease. And listen, we're not doing this in the sense of ridicule or not making at all. fun of anything. This is the current level of, of dogma regarding the heart. And so what we're going to go through is about four slides of heart disease symptoms that the Mayo Clinic has diagnosed. Yes. The first one is heart disease symptoms caused by abnormal heartbeats or arrhythmias. Yeah. Okay. And arrhythmias are very, very dangerous because they can lead directly to a heart attack or to a clot formation. And the Mayo Clinic offers, of course, nothing to treat these symptoms. But some of these are fluttering in your chest, racing heartbeat, tachycardia, super fast. You know, when you lay down a bed after a big heavy meal, the tachycardia, slow heartbeat, bradycardia. My, the patient today said, my husband had a super low heartbeat. This is the one on the Crest door. Super slow. Super slow heartbeat. And... Super slow heartbeat. It was in the 30s. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And they they took him off his high blood pressure medicine. And, of course, it went up just fine. She goes, oh, well, that's all he needed. He just needed to be off that medication. Wow. He's on a statin. He's on a high blood pressure medicine. He gets his flu shot every week or every year. And dementia is showing up. And dementia is showing up. Very sad. Chest pain or discomfort is another abnormal heartbeat. Shortness of breath, 
lightheadedness, dizziness, and syncope, you know, fainting, or, or, or near fainting. Or near fainting. Yeah. That's rather scary. Another one is heart disease symptoms caused by heart defects. Which is usually congenital problems. Yeah. And that's pale gray or blue skin, um, swelling in the legs, abdomen, or area around the eyes. In an infant, it's shortness of breath during feedings. That's, that's really scary. And leading to poor weight gain. Um, easily getting short of breath during exercise or activity. Easily tiring during exercise or activity. And swelling in the hands, ankles, or feet. Yes. I do want you to remind you that they don't have anything to help this except for surgery um, for the heart defects and drugs. Then if you have a weak heart muscle, you know, just basic cardiomyopathy, it's just a thickening, a stiffening of the heart muscle. These are some of the symptoms that may show up as a result of cardiomyopathy. Uh, cardio meaning heart, myo meaning muscle, and uh, pathy meaning condition. Breathlessness with, with exertion or at rest, swelling of the legs, ankles, and feet, fatigue, irregular heartbeats that feel rapid, pounding or fluttering, dizziness, lightheadedness, and fainting. So those are weak And you, you notice muscle. some of these overlap. Some of them do. Yeah. yeah. And then here's heart infections. There's three types of heart infections, pericarditis, myocarditis, and endocarditis, depending on what area the heart's involved. Pericarditis is the outside of the heart, myocarditis myocarditis is the muscular middle layer of the heart and endocarditis is the inner membrane that separates the chambers and the valves of the heart. And some of the symptoms for heart infections are a fever, shortness of breath, weakness or fatigue, swelling in your legs or abdomen, changes in your heart rhythm, dry or persistent cough. So watch for that and skin rashes or unusual spots, okay? And valvular problems, the heart has four valves. Right, the mitral, the mitral. tricuspid, aortic, and pulmonary. Mm -hmm. And the heart is sitting there primarily to divert blood coming back to the heart into the lungs, get heart blood coming out of the lungs back into the heart, and then to pump that oxygenated blood back into the body. And, and there's four valves involved with all these things taking place. And they have to close properly and they cannot be stretched out. Right. Or, right. Or well, enlarged, enlarged heart will stretch the supporting tissue around the heart and then you're going to end up with regurgitation. Yeah, because it leaks around. The cartilage around does the not yes. enlarge. The right. muscle enlarges, but the cartilage doesn't right. where the valves are. And so you, you leak. So depending on which valve isn't working, you know, fatigue, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, swollen feet or ankles, chest pain, and again, fainting. Syncope. Is that how you say that? Syncope, yes. Syncope. So again, to Syncope. remind you to deal with all those symptoms that we just told you about from the Mayo Clinic, the medical establishment says to eat your vegetables, take a statin drug to lower the cholesterol, and to exercise. That's it. What else? I don't That's know. That's it. But we have 103. But... Forbidden we ways. We put our heads together <laughs> yeah. and came up with 103 forbidden ways to help your heart. We're not going to take time to go through these. Yeah, we don't want to be here till next Tuesday. That's right. And so this is in a handout yep. that's available to download at the end of the podcast. Yeah, beautiful handout. It's really fun. Some of them are, are um, the, there's just some really cool things in here. Every one of them will help your heart. Yes. And um, we also have some of the supplements in here and different things you can well, do. Well, that's listed on the next one. Yeah. Let's go to that. Yeah. 35 supplements to feed the heart. These are some of them. And we're not recommending you take all these supplements for your heart, but we're simply showing you what you have at your disposal to feed your heart. And if you take our symptom survey that's free on our website, we can recommend you know, any particular ones you might need. Yeah, based on your symptoms. Yeah, but we want to be very, very clear. These supplements do not, we repeat, do not take the place of your medications. They're only listed as foods to feed the heart. Yeah, these are not vitamins. No. These are whole food concentrates. They are not synthetic vitamins. And notice we have a little disclaimer at the bottom of that slide because this is a very scary area. Yeah, because we've had patients, you know, once they start using some of these supplements to feed the heart, they start feeling better almost, you know, within a week or two. Oh, can I get rid of my meds? No, 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 no. You go talk to your cardiologist about that. 
Like you the, do not stop or change any dosage yeah. without talking to your cardiologist yeah, first. like my patient did today, and then he got off his blood pressure medicine. He's also taking an aspirin a day, Jack. Oh, you for left that just, one out. Yeah. Just FYI. Just so he can bleed a little extra. Yeah, okay. well, yeah. They they know, and I have studies in the office that those that causes <clears throat> strokes in the back of the brain. They've proven that, and yet they just keep giving it to people. All right. They just keep giving statins, which do nothing. So one of our mentors, as we've talked about before, is Dr. Thomas Cowan, and his book, Human Heart, Cosmic Heart, is now in publication and available, and we highly, highly recommend it. It's one of those 103 things to read this book. Right. We recommend it so much that Jack is going to take about 12 minutes and read a selection from the book, and it's something we've never done before in a podcast, but this is so compelling and so lifted our hearts that we want to share it with yeah, you. Yeah, this is the cosmic part of the heart. It's chapter 12 called, What's Love Got to Do With It? <laughs> this goes along with our 101 podcast. Yeah. So I'm going to read this. I'll, I'll try to read it quickly. No, just read it nicely. And you read so well and so beautifully. Thank you. All right. Dr. Paul Persall a, was a neuropsychologist who counseled patients before and after they underwent heart transplant surgery. In his 1999 book, The Heart's Code, Dr. Pearsall described the profound effects a new heart can have on a transplant recipient. He found that many of the heart transplant patients he worked with experienced a significant and inexplicable change in their personality, hmm. or as I think of it, the essence of their being, following the receipt of a new heart. Shockingly, this new essence often reflected the essence of the organ donor. Hmm. There could be many explanations for this change of heart, so to speak. Receiving a heart transplant is a terrifying and traumatic experience that forces people to confront their own mortality in a direct, even brutal way. Yeah, look at that picture on there, taking a heart out, putting one in. It's amazing. And patients are given powerful medications before, during, and after surgery, including medications to prevent their bodies from rejecting the organ. And these drugs can have short and long-term psychological effects. Ah. Patients may also experience profound relief after they receive a new healthier heart. The heady and overwhelming feeling of having a new lease on life that can alter someone's entire perspective on life. Profound emotional and psychological upheaval in a patient could be considered a very normal and healthy reaction to the intensity of undergoing and surviving a heart transplant operation. But this can't fully explain what Dr. Pearsall heard from his patients. In The Heart's Code, he tells the story of a white, middle-aged man who worked all his life in a factory, espoused racist beliefs, and had no interest in what some might refer to as highbrow culture, such as opera or, and classical music. Then this man received a new heart from an anonymous donor. In the weeks and months that followed, as the man recovered, his wife began to witness profound changes in him, describing a husband who seemed almost like a new man. He wasn't simply relieved and grateful and shaken by the experience of having undergone a heart transplant. He started to hang out in places that were mostly frequented by African Americans. He became friends with African American co-workers whom he had previously shunned and found no common ground with. He even seemed to walk differently, and eventually, mostly in secret, he began to listen to classical music, especially violin concertos. Hmm. For months, this man attempted to hide these personality changes conflicted between the man he had been and the man he had become. Inevitably, the change of heart prevailed, and he was able to embrace a new life and a new essence. Deeply curious, the man and his wife began to investigate the identity of the donor, and they discovered that he was a young African-American male who had been shot and killed while walking to school. This was mysterious and fascinating to them, but their profound awe came years later when they learned further details that the young man was shot and killed on his way to the music academy at which he was studying to become a classical violinist. Wow, it just gave me chills. Now, there are other stories like this, and because organ donations often come from people who are otherwise healthy and suffer a violent death, 
There have also been cases in which a heart recipient has been able to help the police solve a crime based on their intimate knowledge of how events unfolded on the day they died. This isn't a brain transplant. This no, is a no, heart... this is a heart transplant. And the recipient, of course, wasn't there, had never met or heard the previous heart's owner, and had no earthly way of knowing how these events transpired. But he or she is somehow able to provide accurate and verifiable details as leads for the investigations. Wow. In the Hearts Code, Dr. Pearsall explains that his approach in helping transplant patients adjust to their new heart is to try to help them stop listening to their conscious, logical reasons and to just go with the flow with their actual present experience. Most of us have had this experience and know the difference between the state of consciousness when your mind is constantly going, analyzing, thinking, worrying, planning, and those profound, if rare, moments when you are in the moment, just being, when the relentless machinations of your mind seem to have fallen away. Dr. Pearsall describes some transplant recipients who are never able to achieve this in a meaningful way. They seem to have no new memories or new, or new essence. Often these patients never stop struggling to cope with their post-transplant reality. The patients who either naturally or through Dr. Pearsall's counseling accept or even embrace new memories and a new essence often have the best health outcomes. At that point, many even revel in their change of heart and their whole new life. These changes have not been observed in patients with kidney, liver, or lung transplants. So just heart transplants. Just the heart. It seems that only, excuse me, with a new heart do you get a new personality. And this new personality comes with a choice, the freedom to choose between suppressing or embracing it. Some people suppress it, and often the rest of their lives are full of tremendous struggle and conflict. Others choose to accept this change of heart, flow with it with an eager, if fearful, to see where it takes them. Although this phenomenon is most dramatic among heart transplant recipients, who among us has not had an experience like this? Standing at a crossroads, often after a tragic, traumatic, or terrifying experience, such as a chronic illness or accident, and you are faced with a choice between desperately trying to hang on to life as you knew it, a life that, while familiar and therefore comfortable, may no longer be right for you, and a frightening but exhilarating leap of faith where you are guided only by something powerful inside of you, something that seems to reside in your heart. And that gives you the courage to move forward in an unknown direction without fear. Wow. When I met my wife, Linda, it was like getting a new heart. Oh. She was a gift from somewhere I didn't know existed and couldn't really understand. But I had a choice to make, too. I could reorient my life around this new reality or choose to not be bothered because the new way had so many uncertainties and so much uncharted territory ahead. I believe it is love that gives us the courage to make this choice, this leap of faith. And where we find love we inexorably find the heart. It is the core of our being, the keeper of our essence. So what does the heart have to do with love? Probably nothing, according to your cardiologist. The heart is a finely innervated piece of specialized muscle. Nothing else exists but this physical stuff. Dissection of the heart reveals nothing that someone could call love. The heliocentric, modern, scientific, quantitative, double-blind research mechanistic paradigm says there's no connection between the heart and love. And yet across centuries and across cultures, so many countless people, poets, writers, lovers, mothers, fathers, children, even scientists have experienced love, and they connect it with the heart. What gives? Where lies the truth? I can't, de I can't define love or characterize it in a succinct way, but I do know that love, perhaps more than any other feeling, involves our essential self, you do not love something in a superficial way. Superficiality and love are mutually exclusive. But what is meant by our essential self? Imagine yourself as a young child playing in a park. Then picture yourself as a teenager, as a young adult, and then as a middle-aged or elderly person, person walking with a slower, stiffer gait. 
It doesn't matter whether you've reached old age yet or not. Physically, the cells in your body, those things that scientists and doctors believe in, are different in each of those scenarios because your body replaces your cells over time. Nothing is the same between that young child playing in the park and that elder walking slowly and gingerly. And yet we all know there is a thread, an essence that runs through each of our lives. We know there is continuity between the child who was and the elder who will be. Although it's impossible to articulate a person's essence without it sounding glib, I believe Mozart's essence, the reason he was able to give us so much, had something to do with the tension between his musical genius and his immaturity. Tiger Woods' essence had something to do with an almost mystical connection to golf and the natural consequences of a lost childhood. Dostoevsky's essence had to do with justice and freedom. Those ideas, those deeply held beliefs, permeated everything he wrote and did throughout his life. And for me, my essence has to do with trying to get to the heart of the matter, of a deep unease with answers that are served on a platter, an essence that has kept me company throughout my entire life. This essence seems to arrive at or before birth, and it travels with us at least until the day we die. This essence is also revealed in the way we refer to ourselves spatially. If you want to make a gesture referring to yourself, you don't point to your foot and say, this is me. You don't point to your genitals or abdomen or buttocks or even your head and say, this is me. Try it. It feels weird and wrong. Then point to your heart and see if you feel, there do I dwell. Scientific, maybe not. An actual experience, absolutely. And again, there is the question of which do you trust as a way of knowing? When you want to connect with another person, do you hold them to your foot, <laughs> your buttocks? Do you put them against your head? Try this with a child or a beloved pet. I strongly suspect it will feel weird and wrong. No, you hold your beloved against your heart. We have an instinct to represent deep connection with our heart, far and above the fact that it is convenient for our arms to reach to that part of an anatomy. Even cardiologists don't hold their children against their buttocks when their children feel sad or hurt. Mm -hmm. If we want to convey a deeply held belief, we often do it with a clenched fist, about the same size and shape as our heart, over our heart. We don't hold it over our head or over our abdomen. Again, try it and see how that feels. When we want to make an emotional connection, convey our deep feelings, or demonstrate that we're dealing with our essence as a human, we rush to get our heart involved into that experience. Love necessarily involves the deepest part of our being and our essence. Nobody, not even the most cynical among us, would, be, would want to be told, oh, I love you with all my foot, mm -hmm. or my brain loves you very much, or even worse, my genitals are in love with you. No one wants to hear that. We only accept expressions of the heart as meaningful. Like essence, freedom is also necessarily part of the definition of love. For it to be love, a person needs to tell you, and more importantly, show you through freely chosen actions that being with you, fighting for you, protecting you, caring for you is a path that they have freely chosen. There's no such thing as loving you because I had no choice, loving you because there was a gun to my head, loving you to impress my dad, or loving you because economically it was the soundest choice. This kind of love either doesn't last or becomes the worst kind of torture. For love, there must be choice. But perhaps more precisely, there must be choice within the exorbility of the connection. It is as if the world somehow presents you with this possibility, but you are then compelled to follow the path, as if something more powerful inside guides you, whatever your brain may say. That's beautiful. And That's you know, just incredible. Thomas Cowan had heart problems. Oh, from childhood. From childhood. Mm -hmm. So it's been a love of his, his entire life. And he's um, discovered some really, well, I don't know if he's discovered, but he's brought to light some discoveries of some other doctors that talk about the heart not being a pump and and the capillaries that 
that the heart the the blood. heart pumps the blood into the arteries, but then how does it get back to the heart? Because once it goes through the arteries, then it goes into the arterioles, and then it goes into the capillary Capillaries. bed it where it's stagnant. It doesn't move down it there. It sits still. The heart it, doesn't pump it down there. That's what's so fascinating. And so how does it get back to the heart? And it's an essence. It's a paranormal essence from the universe, from God, and it's miraculous. And it's done with, with love and with the heart. And, you know, the other day I had to do something I hadn't done for a long, long time. And I, I decided to not even think about how to do it. I just let my cellular memory do it. And I just surrendered to it. It was so beautiful. And I just went right through it. I didn't even bobble. I was just, whoo, whoo. No, you don't think whew, about it. Whew. It's like riding a bike kind of thing. And it was just this most beautiful dance with the universe and the oneness of everything. And that's what Dr. Michael or Thomas Cowan brings out in his book. It's poetry. Yes, Because he is. loves it. This isn't, a, this isn't a reference book with, well, this is exactly how this happens and this how this happens. But he loves the magic, yeah. majesty and the magic the of magic, the heart. The magic of the heart. Yeah. The seed of the soul. Yeah, it's just a beautiful book, and we recommend it for everybody. So It's a good thing Hitler didn't get his heart transplanted into somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that was a beautiful little boy, or I guess he was a young adult, that the violinist. Yeah, he was shot on the way to a violin lesson. Yeah. And An African-American, and all of a sudden, when that heart gets inside of this white racist... He's not a racist. He tries to hide what he's feeling because, <laughs> my gosh... <laughs> That, that, that just kind of blows your mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It? So real quick, we're going to try to, because this is already at 46 minutes, we're going to try and get through those symptoms again. But as Mary puts here on the slide, let's, maybe there's some different answers to those we're same symptoms. Going, yeah, find some forbidden answers. You know, we went over the Mayo Clinic and everything that they diagnosed and said these are the diagnosable things. Now let's give you some forbidden answers that they're right, not going, going to Right, we're going to show you things that we have profound experience outcomes in our clinic mm -hmm. as suggestions. Again, these are not to be used in place of medicines. No, not at these all. These are suggestions because we have found these effective in our clinic with patients. Okay, the first one, of course, is... The, you saw this earlier in the podcast mm -hmm, about the arrhythmias. The arrhythmias that are so scary for abnormal heartbeats. So fluttering in your chest. We suggest you use Cataplex B and organically bound minerals to help support that problem. The nerves, the nerves especially. Um, racing heartbeat, tachycardia. Usually you're, you're short of potassium, mm -hmm. and a lot of times a cardiologist will suggest potassium containing uh, supplements or drugs to slow that heart down. But you chew, a, chew about six of these up, and you'll watch, watch it that, just Watch calm that tachycardia down. calm down. A slow heartbeat, we recommend phosphate liquid. Because it's full of phosphoric acid or phosphorus, Speeds. orthophosphoric yep. acid, a great source of phosphorus. I told that to this lady today and she said, oh, I just took him off the drug. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which right. is good. I'm glad he didn't need anything, <laughs> but it's amazing how strong the heart is. Okay. For chest pain and or discomfort. Oh, that's supposed to be red. I know we were supposed to yeah. leave this one right. You go to the ER. You go to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ha if you're suddenly having chest pain, go to the ER. And we did put support with Cataplex F, which will push calcium into the heart muscle, calm it down, relax it. Get rid of the cramp. The cramp, because that's deadly. So on the way to the ER, chew up Cataplex F. Yeah, remember that uh, the majority of heart attacks do not involve a thrombus, do not involve a clot mm -hmm. in the cardiac or the coronary artery. Uh, they involve a muscle cramp, a charley horse in the myocardium itself, and it just cramps up and stops beating. Yeah. So that's, that's and, why we're talking about that. And cardiotrophin PMG would yep. be very supportive of that. Shortness of breath, we recommend... Do you have it up there? Yeah, Cataplex E2 and Cataplex F. Again? E2 helps to get more. Uh, it, it's, it's the nutrient uh, uh, analog of nitroglycerin. Yes. Without the headaches. Yes. And again, Cataplex F to get the calcium into the heart. You get it to be, beat correctly. 
Lightheadedness, we recommend Cataplex B. And, and fast food. And fast food. Dizziness. Cataplex E2, Cataplex B, and Cyruta Plus. And fainting. Yeah, Cataplex F and B. You'll notice the same things coming around here. That's why Food that, for the nerves. Yeah, and that's why on that chart we gave you earlier, not chart, but list of supplements recommended to support the heart, you see a lot of these things uh, showing up on a regular basis. Yeah. So now heart defects. Uh, again, these, these are nutritional suggestions to support the heart in its proper function. But uh, pale gray or blue skin, you go to the ER. Yeah, you you don't, don't fool around. Cyanosis no. starts showing up. You're getting an accumulation of deoxygenated blood in the tissues, not oxygenated, and that can be very serious in a hurry. Yeah, so swelling in the legs, abdomen, or areas around the eyes, cardiotrophin, cyrutoplus, and AC carbamide. Which is a natural diuretic. Diuretic and very, very safe. Yes. It's the diuretic that they used for a long, 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 long time before the invention of Lasix. Yeah, we and, um, did a podcast on this for crisis care, mm -hmm. quick, quick fixes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't eating two bars of chocolate. <laughs> In an infant, shortness of breath during feedings prior to poor weight gain, you take them to the ER. Take if the you ER. notice that when you are feeding, breastfeeding or with a bottle, and all of a sudden the baby has to stop and have to catch its breath, Take the baby to the because ER. Because it's a heart defect, it's a heart, according it's to a the Mayo Clinic. It's a heart defect and may require heart surgery. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then easily getting short of breath during exercise. Again, E2 to get oxygen into the heart muscle. Cataplex to F to get calcium into the heart muscle. Cataplex B to get the electrical signal to the heart muscle. Yeah. Easily tiring during exercise or activity, same thing, but just add some Cyruta Plus that strengthens the walls just of the arteries. Strengthens. Rutin. It is a supply of rutin, and there's some great medical research on how valuable rutin is for good heart health. Yeah, it's very, very critical, and especially if you've had a history of strokes. Yes. That's incredible, incredibly important to add to your diet. Swelling in the hands, ankles, or feet. Cardiotrophin PMG, that's the protomorphogen for the heart, stops any autoimmune problems. It also helps rebuild the heart. Um, it's the blueprint kind of for the heart. And Cyruta Plus to help rebuild it. And of course, Cataplex, I mean, AC carbamide to help reduce the swelling. And the then the next one, uh, just a weak heart muscle. It just doesn't have the strength that it needs. And as you look at these, again, we're talking about, do you want to go through these individually or can I just kind of go mention? Ahead. Just, again, cataplex E2 to get oxygen into the heart muscle. Cardiotrophin stimulates the, the growth of new heart, t healthy heart tissue. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you see PMG there, protomorphogen. If you will Google oral tolerization, you'll see how this is being heavily investigated now in medical research. And then, again, Cardio Plus, an overall for tonic for the heart, mm -hmm. uh, calcium lactate, f so that the muscle contractions are nice and strong. Same thing with Cataplex B. It's the electrical component. And then fast food for a source of fast Yeah, a lot of people take fast food liquid first thing in the morning if they have fatigue, and boom, it gets them going. Your regular heartbeats, the most important thing there is the Cataplex B, but the organically bound is a, a, a source of phosphor, I mean, potassium. Yeah, I should have switched that order around. That's all right. And then Cataplex F, uh, again, to get the calcium into the heart They're muscle. They're all super important. And then you see another repeat here for dizziness. In other words, there's about four or five different things here that if you're taking on a daily basis to support the heart, you'll find a lot of these things either disappearing or preventing them from happening in the first place. So cardiotrophin for dizziness, lightheadedness, and fainting, cataplex E2, cataplex B, and Cyruta Plus. And this is support for heart symptoms caused by infections. Of which there's three basic kinds of, uh, three different ways in which your heart can be have an infection. The outer surface, uh, the pericardium. We talked about that, yeah. The muscle layer, as we are, we talked about this earlier, uh, the, the, the middle layer of the muscle, and then the endo. Uh, cardium, which is the inner area of the heart itself that's in contact with the blood. Mm -hmm. And there, there are several things there that, that are just powerful to support the immune system's ability to deal with the infection. And these are some of the, um, all of the, the above will help with all of these symptoms. The fever, you can add in calcium lactate and cataplex F, shortness of breath, excuse me, we 
jumped over to changes in your heart rhythm would be cataplex B, very important, the B vitamins, the whole food B vitamins, and cataplex F. Yeah, synthetic Bs will not do this. Won't do this. Synthetic B does not have this yeah, effect whatsoever I hope in the beat heart. beat that into their heads enough that yeah. they hear us on this. This needs to be whole foods. And then shortness of breath, cataplex E2. Dry or persistent cough, that's a sign of an infection. Yes. Conjuplex and andrographis, you can add to the list above, although there's conjuplex up there. Um, weakness or fatigue is cataplex E2 and B. Skin rashes or unusual spots, I would recommend gaps and possibly added to the, to the, the supplements above. But doing gaps, um, usually skin rashes is very often a gut problem, but Mayo Clinic is saying that is a heart infection. Yeah. So that's very critical. You go very foundational. You can't lose your heart. You only have one. So you fix that gut and, of course, take care of the infection at the same time. And I want to again mention these things we're suggesting are not antibiotics and they are not to be taken in place of medication. These are food. These are whole food concentrates that are known to support the function of the Although heart. garlic forte is a natural antibiotic. It's a very wonderful product. Um, all of those at the top there, the Conjuplex, the F, the Echinacea Liquid, the St. John's Wort helps viral. It, it breaks open the envelope on a viral um, pathogen, and we don't have anything in medicine that helps a virus. No, there's but, no antibiotic that'll touch a virus. Right, and then golden seal also helps the gut. And swelling in your legs or abdomen. Now, we've mentioned uh, whole food supplements versus the synthetic. Uh, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, podcast number 92, how vitamins can lead to malnutrition is something you might want to listen to. That's a very podcast good. Podcast 92. It's a very good podcast. We refer a lot of people to that that are taking synthetic vitamins. And then if there's problems with the valves... Uh, again, you're going to see the same things here. So if you were using a few supplements for the heart, all those various problems with the heart can be better supported by the use of maybe a half a dozen supplements. Mm -hmm. Not very many. So fatigue, of course, cal calcium lactate, cardio plus, protofood, it's essential um, amino acids, um, cataplex B for the nerves, Shortness of breath, cataplex E2, and protofood will help rebuild that, rebuild collagen, rebuild everything in your heart um, and, and everywhere. Irregular heartbeat, cardiotrophin PMG, and cataplex B. I would probably add in cataplex F into that one too, but definitely cataplex B. Swollen feet or ankles, we're just seeing the same thing over and over again. You yeah, got the we cardiotrophin, are. We're just the B, same thing over and but over. But AC carbamide, and you have to take a lot of AC carbamide, but you only need to take it, <laughs> excuse me, for about two or three days. Yeah. And um, it takes care of the problem. Chest pain, consider the ER. Yes. <laughs> for sure. We should have put this one in red too. Cataplex E2 helps you breathe, get more oxygen into you, cardiotrophin, and cataplex F. And then fainting. Um, Again, fast food and cataplex F. Now, how do we know those things are effective? Because of the testing that we can do in the office. And we've had a podcast uh, come out here before called LBJ Should Have Had This, Not an EKG, podcast number 89. Yeah. And, um, and you're looking right there at the heart sound recorder. It's been out for a short period of time. And it just sits over the valves of the heart. Here, here we're getting a mitral valve reading in this in the model here, uh, the most important valve, probably the most important valve in the heart. And it's a valve that has to shut when the left ventricle compresses blood into the aorta. Mm -hmm. It's the, you know the valve, the mitral is sitting there between the left atrium and the left ventricle, and that valve has to shut and just slam shut so that all the blood in that left ventricle doesn't go back upstairs into that atrium, but goes up the aorta and, in, and pumps into the rest of the body. And so we do not charge for this test. Yeah, out of guilt. Yeah, out of guilt. Because we didn't. A responsible, I think a responsible doctor, and I don't care if he's a doctor of chiropractic, a doctor of medicine, a doctor of naturopathy, 
should always check his patients, her patients' hearts. Mm-hmm. And we didn't do it. We did have an endocardiograph, but it was clumsy and cumbersome and had a tape and it wasn't digitized and it was hard to do. And it was a little subjective to the tester. You know, the tester had to make sure they were doing it correctly. This one is a breeze. This one's So you just call the office. Uh, there's the phone number. What do we have? About six of these we did yesterday. We were slammed. Oh, yeah, we were slammed. And we had an emergency on somebody that we really needed to do one. And we managed to squeeze it in, but it wasn't easy. Yeah. So 801-523-1890, that's the phone number of the office. You can schedule yourself and for if, a free And if test. you're not in Utah, they're all over the country now. They've How many have they sold? You just go to heartsoundrecorder.com. They should have a list. Yeah, and they're, these are, they're all over the country right now. I think there's 25 of them in, Utah, in Ohio alone. Yeah, and we got number 75, and we I got, think they've sold another two or 300 since Something then? like that, quite yeah. a few. They're spreading so across the country. You should be able country. to find them everywhere. You can buy one for yourself if you'd like. They're yeah, it's it's it what it is is a digital stethoscope. Yeah, it is. You just have to know where to place it over the heart to get these readings on a computer at home. But the beautiful thing is it predicts what's going to happen to your heart. Well, it it doesn't work on an electrical basis like an EKG. Right. It is an accelerometer in that little round disc there that places over the body and it measures the strength of the heart contraction. And it measures the effectiveness of the heart valve during the contraction and after the contraction. And what it does is it, 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 when you say predict, what it's showing is if weaknesses are developing, it will show immediately on that heart scan. Whereas an EKG just shows you what has already happened. Yeah, you, that's why with, the, with LBJ, LBJ <laughs> yeah. his cardiologist says, nope, you got a clean bill of health, you're fine. The next day he dies of a massive heart attack. Yeah. So, because the EKG can't see what's coming. Yeah. And, you know, they came out and broke these to pieces with Dr. Royally when yeah. he built his endocardiograph. They came out with baseball bats. And destroyed them. Yep. And it took decades to to figure out how he had made that. Yeah. And transfer it over to digital. This is this is like a discovery of the ages. Now I want to correct something I just said about the fact that the uh, EKG can't tell you what's coming. Of course, it can see serious problems inside the heart, but it only sees serious problems in the heart if that serious problem has already caused problems. Right, that's what we said. And so when you do an EKG, it can show that there's irregularities. It can show that there's arrhythmias. Because it's already happened. Because it's already, the, what causes it has already happened. You haven't happened. died from it. With, with the, endocard- or with the uh, heart sound recorder, uh, there may not have an, an event that may not have happened yet. Mm-hmm. But you can see it coming by based on that scan. Yeah, we see people with no second sound. And it, we, we almost can't breathe when we see that yes. in, in the office. And you have no idea. Or we'll see third and fourth sounds, which shows the heart is really on its way out. You shouldn't have a third and fourth sound. It never sound. rests. It doesn't rest. It's exhausted. Yeah. And, and you would never know this. You can't feel your heart. You shouldn't feel it. You better not. No. So our main heart supplements, if you can't remember all 103 yeah, you saw a whole mess of those <laughs> or there. 35 that yeah. we brought up, I know it seems overwhelming, but our main three heart supplements are Cardio Plus, Cataplex B, and Cataplex F. And let's just real quickly go over what's in them. I See that handout on the screen? That's what I'm going to give you, 103 forbidden ways to support your heart. But the first one is Cardio heart. Plus. And this is basically a multivitamin for the heart. The first, one of the first things it has in it is cardiotrophin PMG, and this helps tonify the heart. It also stops any autoimmune attack that's yeah. happening to the heart. Yeah, just as you, in uh, rheumatoid arthritis where the mm-hmm. body's attacking the joints, Hashimoto's where the body's attacking the thyroid, it can also attack the heart. According to DeBakey Institute, the ones who developed the heart bypass surgery out of Houston, Texas, DeBakey says every heart problem is an autoimmune problem. Well, when your heart is degenerating at such a fast rate, like with congestive heart failure, it will slough off dead and dying cells faster than your lymphs can 
get rid of it. Yes. You can clean it, clean them out. So they get pushed and shoved into your bloodstream, and your body's like, oh, no, 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 no. You cannot have this in your bloodstream. And so it creates the antibodies to it. And, and, and it'll attack the heart. And, it, and, and it, it will attack. It thinks the heart's the enemy. Yeah. And so it starts attacking the heart. So what doctor in his brilliance, Dr. Royal Lee made, was literally the DNA of the heart. You take this in a pill form, and it goes down into your stomach, starts to absorb into the gut or the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, and your body says, oh, there's the enemy. Let's attack there. And it attacks that in your, in your stomach, so to speak, in your lymph there, and leaves your heart alone. But all it gives you is time. You have time to feed your heart. Yeah. And you feed your heart with fat and protein, yeah. mostly. And we and those supplements that organ meat that you're you know, you're not just you're not gonna eat. So so that cardiotrophin is so critical to take. You can take it alone if you like, but this multivitamin Cardio Plus has it in it already. The second thing it has is Cataplex E2. And as we've explained before, this is the oxygen conserving factor of the blood. So it will bring more oxygen to your heart. And then Cataplex G, which is vasodilating, it, it, it's, it spreads out. It spreads out the nerves and relaxes everything. It's the relaxing, the calming B vitamins. Yeah, and the vasodilating effect is to cause the arteries that feed the heart to expand, to, to get, dilate, to mm -hmm. get more oxygen get more to oxygen the heart muscle. In there. So you'll feel so much better taking this. And then Cataplex C increases oxygen in the heart for strength yeah, and ox helps. Cataplex, one of the Cataplex C's major things outside of the immune system is to increase the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood, of the hemoglobin. Yeah, and it, all, yeah, and it helps rebuild the heart also. Do this is what Dr. Royal Lee said on um, B4. It's from the lectures of Royal Lee, Volume 2. Do you want to read that? Well, B4 is the one that restores function to the nerve tissue. It's very important. It's not present at all. At, it is not present at all in a synthetic vitamin. And that's why synthetic vitamin won't cure fibrillation and won't restore tone to the heart muscle and stop valve leakage and the regurgitation and the murmurs that will be stopped by the natural vitamin. If no matter where you go, in a pharmacy, a grocery store, a health food store, you pick up a bottle of vitamin B, uh, or a multivitamin B, because there's a whole bunch of B vitamins, mm -hmm. and look on the label, you will not see B4. Yeah. B4 can only come from rice polishings as well as from the liver and a couple other organ sources. Yeah, liver's the first ingredient yes. in here. Yes, and, right. And so uh, what's important here is B4 is the antiparalytic vitamin. It is B4 that restores the electrical signal to the heart which is why when we do a heart scan recorder on some people and we get a really bad looking signal and they chew up some B and we test them again another 10 or 15 minutes, you can see an immediate change take place in the heart scan. Yeah, because it converts the chemical energy in the food into electrical energy to power the heart muscle. Yes. The next um, one of our main heart um, supplements is Cataplex F. And Dr. Royal Lee says one of the most important vitamins in our food is vitamin F. Our best source of vitamin F is good butter. There's been a lot written about, about F, but not enough about the true nature of it. Vitamin F promotes a diffusion of calcium out of the bloodstream and into the tissues and particularly into the muscle. Without calcium, we lose our endurance. We tire easily. And if the heart muscle is deprived of calcium by a vitamin F deficiency, it's unable to complete its cycle. The muscle contraction collapses before it's finished. And you can see that on the heart scan. You can see the heart muscle instead of lub, dub, lub, dub. You see, lub. Yeah. Lub. You, you, you can, can have all, see it right there in front of you. And you can have all the calcium in the world in your bloodstream, but if you can't get it, into the heart, yeah. ionized in there, all the calcium in a limestone quarry will do you no good without the nutrients to move it to where it belongs, and where it belongs is in the tissues yes. of your heart muscle. So, And then oils. We need some oils for the heart. Yeah. We need some oils in the sense of the omega-3s, mm -hmm. the omega-3 fatty acids. Evening primrose is an incre incredible 
oil for the heart to help get rid of the placking. The placking. It the dissolves placking. placking. Mm-hmm. And then tuna omega-3. You know, you cannot cre- keep the balance of omega-3, 6, and 9 in your diet without supplementing with omega-3s. That's threes. a good point. You cannot do it. I mean, it's, it's practically impossible to eat enough fish, deep sea ocean fish. So you have to supplement. It's a very inexpensive supplement, but it's wonderful for the heart. It's right. great for the brain and the endocrine system and everything else. The next one, soybean lecithin, which keeps the fat in suspension. It keeps suspension. the cholesterol in suspension in, suspe- in the bloodstream. So you don't clot. So it doesn't. That's so a, you, yeah. So you don't get thing. you don't get calcium uh, cholesterol buildup. You don't the get placking. the fatty placking mm-hmm. on the walls of the arteries. It's very critical. Another one, of course, is the natural vitamin E. Yes. Wheat germ oil. The vitamin of the heart. Yes. Is vitamin E. That's what it's called. And then the one of the last ones is butter. Yes. Butter, 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 butter. We all love butter. Put together a little heart um, protocol on our website. If you go to ForbiddenDoctor.com and search for heart general support, we've got those three main ones in there, but I threw in a couple others. I threw in wheat germ oil and Hawthorne. It's a Medier product, and it's a natural herbal tonic for the yes, heart. Yes, and so and so with instead of all those things we were mentioning. Here's a healthy heart protocol in the sense of keeping the heart healthy. Yeah. You can also do a symptom survey on our um, website and get something more personalized. But this is just a general heart support. If you took that, you would be doing wonders for your heart. And lastly, take care of your beautiful heart by realizing how precious you are. I hope that uh, excerpt from chapter 12 that I read can help get that idea across as to how precious we really are. Isn't that beautiful? Even to the point that if some, if we were to die by some tragic accident and our heart was used and put into somebody else, there's a sense of immortality there because our essence in our heart would be beating in somebody else's chest. And just maybe, just maybe if they were present in the moment, they would have our memories. They would have what made life beautiful to us, make life beautiful to them. So take care of your beautiful heart. Yes. And we... Okay, now I got to get technical and (laughs) jump back out of the beautiful essence of the majesty of the heart. And cover our butts. And cover our butts. (laughs) The statements made in this webinar about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging or this webinar is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. And I don't say this jokingly. Yes. We mean what I just said. It's very critical. And there's our contact information. You can email us. You can text us. You can call us. You can walk in and see us. And we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. If you are curious about long-life energy enzymes or ageless thyroid, you can purchase them without a membership from our website at ForbiddenDoctor.com or get our enzyme formula from Amazon.com by searching the full term, Long Life Energy Enzymes. Don't forget to take our obligation-free symptom survey to get a free personalized supplement protocol recommended for you by Dr. Jack, Mary, or one of our qualified nutritionists. Take the survey, get a call from our nutritionist to create a protocol and a patient login, then use that login to see your own personal protocol along with any favorites you've saved from our symptom library. Remember, our website and our clinic are here for you always.